So far, we've looked at several different aspects of AR and Collections Manager. We've looked at an overview. We've looked at setting up collections representatives, doing a basic quick setup, and running the generate and update exceptions routine, and also the, the payment class calculations. So now we've generated the basic information that we're going to look at. So we go to AR and Collections, and we're going to look at the exception list in depth. So we open up the exception list. The exception list is a list of all of the transactions that require a, a collection person's attention. They might be overdue invoices, they might be uh, unapplied payments or credit memos, they might be short pays or disputes, it could be a lot of different things. So one of the things that's going to, that needs to be done when you first open this up is, is to configure the screen in order to to best facilitate your use. Uh, that means getting rid of fields, uh, hiding fields that you don't need, and moving the fields around. I found that this, uh, this order uh, works best for me. So we'll take a look at the various different columns and, and what, they, what they do. Next contact date is a basic concept of the AR and Collections Manager. Every time a contact is made with a customer, a next contact date, a follow-up date, will be set. It may be set for the next day if it, a voicemail was left, or it may be set sometime uh, in the future. But the first sort order is for next contact date. Every time that a next contact date is updated, when you leave the screen and go back in, it will recalculate and reorder the next contact date. The second sort order is remaining amount. So all of the transactions that are due on 127 will be sorted smallest to largest. And then the next uh, 327, smallest to largest, and so forth. So next contact date is a critical field when creating uh, contact events. The next couple fields identify who the customer is, the customer number and name. This field shows you that there are multiple entries in the exception list for this account. So uh, if you want to, you can resort this by going saying group by customer, and it will then resort these so that regardless of the next contact date, it'll resort these so that uh, they're, all of the, the accounts uh, entries are together again. If you leave the screen and go back in, the sort order reverts to the default order. So multiple invoices, the document number. If you have a, uh, this is the, the document number of the, uh, of the entry. So these are, are your sales, uh, posted sales invoice numbers and, and the document numbers that are associated with this entry. The status, is in this case we've been marked we've transferred all of these accounts they may be new in if if it's appearing for the first time in this list this will say new in this case we've opened these before so they say follow up and a lot of them have been transferred we'll talk about transfers later on the next cat is category in this, in, in this case, it tells you what kind of a transaction is. This is these are unapplied payments. This one is in dispute. This, these are overdue invoices. There are several different categories. Extraordinary value invoice we'll talk about later. And there are still uh, several others. There might be small invoices. Uh, the next one is short paid. We've added some code to Business Central that every time an invoice amount, a, a payment has been recorded for an, for an invoice that is less than the full amount, then uh, it will instantly be added to this list and it will be flagged as having been paid short. Any one of these can be resorted by clicking on the column. And you can then see we have two here that have been paid short. We'll talk about We'll have do a whole uh, video on, uh, on dealing with short pays. Uh, the reason code, uh, if the person that posts the, the payment can tell why 
the invoice was paid short, then they can put a reason code on here so that they can see that in this case, this invoice, they charged freight, but they should not have charged freight. And the customer paid the invoice minus the freight. There might be, uh, there are several different uh, reason codes that you can use. Uh, it might be, for example, let's go into manage and go to edit list. So there are several reason codes, and you'll create your own list of reason codes why somebody might pay, short pay an invoice. Maybe they, uh, they were tax exempt, and uh, they were charged sales tax when they shouldn't have been. Maybe the freight was incorrectly charged. Maybe there was damage in shipping, or the wrong item was sent. So whatever the reason is that the invoice was paid short, you can specify that. We'll talk more about that when we do the video on managing short pays. These three fields go together, short pay, reason code, and write-off. We'll deal with them later. The original amount of the invoice and the remaining amount. So if an invoice has been partially paid, you'll see a remaining amount. In this case, we, we did have some short pays. And so this one, the original amount is two seventy nine nine uh, fifty seven. They paid two seventy and left nine fifty seven. This one, they paid twenty five hundred out of seventy eight thousand. That would be a good reason to contact the customer to find out why only a small amount was paid. What's the problem? So that's one of the reasons what that you might want to uh, w might want to use the short pay is to identify situations where a customer has has uh, not paid the full amount, and you want to find out why. You don't want to write it off, but you want to find out why. Days late. Every day when this is run, this field will be updated. So when things are brand new, the, the days late might be, uh, this is past due date. So this is the days late past the due date. And uh, it might be one, two, three. In this case, this is demo data and we have some 30 or 40 days. But again, if you wanted to uh, deal with the oldest, you can resort this either in ascending or descending order, and then you can find whatever the oldest is. Invoice date. This is the date that the invoice was created, and this is the due date for the invoice. If the invoice was paid off and the remaining balance is zero, this will be the date that the remaining balance was paid off. If you've contacted this customer previously and they've made a promise of when they're going to pay this, this particular invoice, the promise to pay date will appear here. This would be the purchase order. External document number would be the purchase number, which if that's important to you, you can leave in this list. If it's not important, you might want to hide it. Invoices in dispute, and we'll have a whole separate video on uh, dealing with invoices in dispute. There are three places where you can mark an invoice in dispute. One of them is on this screen. We'll look at the other two later. Once the invoice has been, re the dispute has been resolved, you can click on the uh, click on the, the the function and and move it over to. Uh, to dispute resolved. Last contact rep. Who was the last person to, con uh, to contact the customer, but who's assigned to it now? Now, if you remember, a lot of these were transferred, and Bob Cole was the last person to contact them, but it's now assigned to Steve. Now, this may be something of value, uh, currency code, uh, or it may not. Uh, if you're if you're looking at uh, customers with different currencies, you may want to know the the currency code. Uh, otherwise, you can hide it. Journal entry created has to do with with writing write-offs, and we'll talk about that field when we get there. And there's a lot of information up at the top here. If we look at uh, uh, let's go back here, we want to. So group by customer is one of the things that you can do. 
you can mark them as disputed. So you can put your cursor on a line and say mark as disputed. Maybe you want to transfer this account, you can transfer it. If you want to look at your uh, your uh, uh, your comments, the contact uh, uh, comments, you can see them from here. If we want to write things off, we can do that. If you want to open this in Excel, that's possible. So this is several different things that you can do from this list. Mostly, however, this is just to identify which customer that you want to contact. The next video will start going into the next step, which is to look at the exception manager. Thank you very much.